Uh, just a quick slide, guys, more so on just a few things to consider if we have got a failed crop and we are looking at putting spring so a spring sown option, whether it be fodder or, or crop so uh, or, or grain crops. So we'll just we'll run through these quickly. Um, herbicide residues is the main one I'm going to quickly touch. Oh, sorry, main one we'll touch on, and then what what options we have got if we suspect there is some residues there, and obviously um, a couple little um, basic 101 stories. Um, the first thing to remember that if we have sown a crop and we've got pre-emergence there that we're worried about. Nearly all these herbicides rely on microbial activity to break them down. There's a little bit of acid hydrolysis happens with a couple of our SUs, but everything else is pretty much reliant on microbial activity. Well, if you're waterlogged and we've had cold soils, the microbial activity is basically zilch. So the breakdown of those herbicides, has, of those ones that we are residue, residual, are going to be very low unless they've leached out of the profile. Okay, so the ones we do need to consider, obviously, our Group B herbicides. So the ones over our clear fields plus our SUs, our low grains. Triazines, so where we've used them in lupins, TT, canola, faba beans. Uh, Precept, if anyone has applied that, just remember the label clearly states nine months for brassicas. Probably not much of that gone out. Um, Propizomide, which is your rustler birth edge, um, it does hang around. And if we have flown or put out a bit of group Group A clearly states on the label 12 weeks till we put a cereal back in there. So just so some select, but in particular your FOPs, your verdicts. Right, so let's quickly work through the groups. So Group B residue. So our really only option is a clearfield tolerant crop. So we've obviously got our clearfield winter canola, our Spartacus barley or, or clearfield wheat. So Spartacus obviously is a clearfield barley. We've got um, Clearfield wheat too, bit of Elmore or a couple of the other ones from up north, if we really want to head that way. Um, field peas or one of your grain legumes, I think we're all a bit late for um, beans or those options, but if someone wants to have another failed field pea crop, they can head that way. Um, <laughs> so group B residue is an issue. So if you have got that one, um, it is an issue. Uh, TT residue, so beans, lupins, peas are another option. The main TTs, atrazine, turbine, simazine. Now, those three will work differently, remember. So atrazine will leak through the profile. Really mobile, really, really, really mobile. Turbine, nowhere near as mobile. Simazine, somewhere in between, but a lot closer to turbine. Now, if you have a look at the turbine registration, we are actually can put turbine on before sowing cereals. But only in a knife point press wheel system where you're stripping it out, not throwing any back into the next row, and make sure none of that soil throws back in. So potentially, if you know where that turbine has moved into the soil you, and you've used that, that is an option. If you know you've got your knife point press wheel system working well, that is an option. But is the turbine there or has it moved down to there? And that's your unknown and we don't know that. But that's worth keeping it as an option. Last resort is obviously TT canola as a fodder. Propizomide, um, first rustler edge. So a grass, whether it be rye grass, millet, wheat, barley, not an option. Okay, full microbial breakdown, it will still be there. It is super hot on barley. Wheat does have a fraction more um, tolerance, super hot on barley. So if you've used that, um, barley is just not an option. Uh, group A's, as I mentioned before, in particular the FOPs, they do hang around and sit on the surface. What you will find if you have used some, if you put some barley in, it will come up, but it will be, you know, for September, October growing, it will just be on Struggle Street. It will just struggle and struggle and struggle. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And just that last comment on this slide, oh, don't forget about next year that, you know, I'll let that crop grow even though it's got a heap of ryegrass there. Don't let that come back to haunt you in three or four or five years' time where that ryegrass seed bank is still enormous and it's just creating a headache for you. Um, this is a bit of 101, but just quickly, those who do read a label every now and then, clearly states in springtime, if using glyphosate, in particular, even our fully loaded 540s, 570s that have supposedly got the wetter in them, you will need to put some wetter in with that glyphosate for phasic growth in the springtime. Clearly states actually PX wetter. 
Anyone who wants to go and ride the label? Now, I actually only use VC700. BS won't be enough, but um, make sure, if you're doing your knockdown, to smash everything out and starting again, make sure you throw a bit of extra wetter in. Having said that, great opportunity to get a bit of rotation in with our group L's. So, paracot spray seed. And um, uh, if you are using your group L's and you've got some big size ryegrass in particular, make sure you use the appropriate rate. Don't skimp on that rate. As your spikes per needed, wait for those weeds to be actively growing. Obviously, summertime, we're worried about moisture stressed weeds. That doesn't work real well. Exactly the same, we're moisture stressed, but they're the other extreme. Preems, um, probably the main thing I just want to mention here once again if you are going to soak fodder rape or some spring barley and you're going to use a residual herbicide, just consider the crop next year. It's a lot shorter time to sowing. Now, I know we're going to have a lot more microbial activity. We're going into the spring when most of our herbicides break down anyhow. But just keep in the back of your mind that, you know, you go and sow some fodder rape and use some Russell or Edge and you want to put wheat in that paddock or barley in that paddock in 2020, obviously you're asking for trouble. Um, and obviously, yep, so obviously fodder rape, most of you guys know, treat like canola in terms of your pre-emergence. Barley, we can use Treflan or if you really want a box of gold. Um, and if you are running a fodder rape, millet mix or fodder rape cereal mix. It's got your knife point press wheel system working. Obviously, um, you can strip it out of the row. Otherwise, not a lot of pre-emergent options. Post M, obviously our group A's are fine their fodder rape. Um, when was the last time someone here used select in September, October? It works really well. It's when we're supposed to use it. Just that our canola's too advanced, obviously. So you'll be surprised, those guys that do in that situation, got a fodder rape or a, a broadleaf crop and have got ryegrass come later, you'll be surprised how good select bloody works in when it's actively growing. So um, we just couldn't... It's worst time of year to use it is July, when we use it. Uh, obviously, spring sown cereals, we've got plenty of broadleaf options. And uh, just from my own experience, if we are going to sow some winter canola, Unless you really, really have to, I'd be holding off on my Indivix or my Group B option till after summer. So there's a few times you'll put your Indivix out in October, November, then go and graze it over the summer. Really, really dry summer. We thin the winter canola out and then come February, March, oh, gee, there's not really enough winter canola left here. What am I going to do? If you've used your Indivix or you're on duty already, you've backed yourself into a corner. So I'd be holding that Group B off unless you really have to until your grazing program's finished and into next year, just so you've got lots of options. Uh, quick summary, guys. Uh, so any residual herbicides applied since April this year will still be there, basically. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're sowing crops. Consider not paracord as a knockdown or make sure you put some wetter in with that roundup and obviously consider your, your, your crops for 2020. Right know. Sure, sweet. Um, question. Uh, well, I suppose one of Treflan, but I haven't got Treflan mentioned there. So Treflan of all those, it does have a residual, but hence why it's not mentioned in that list there as a herbicide I'm concerned about. Uh, yeah, I'd be seriously considered about it, George. So um, I can vouch for myself that I've got a paddock of ryegrass that's better now. That Secura was applied in 2017 that severely affected ryegrass this year. So poor microbial activity, it will definitely still be there. Yes? We've got ryegrass coming up after 160 grams of Secura sowing. Yep. So have you got an untreated area? So the untreated area, the biomass would be four times. Yeah, but what I'm getting at, if you had an if you if you had an untreated strip versus a treated strip of Secura, the ryegrass in the untreated will be significantly taller and significantly more biomass than you, than the treated area. That's not working, is it? Uh, no, it's not working. But if you've got the residual left over and you've sown a cereal crop in there and you're hoping to grow a crop, that Secura residue is going to be high enough that it's going to be affecting your biomass and your final yield this spring. That's a whole other discussion that we don't need to go down to today. <laughs> that, 
Matt. Hey, Johnny, you're talking about uh, rotation of space league or, or power court. Are you encouraging a double knock? So I'd like to say the net matter or just saying one or the other? Yeah, either one. Matt, whatever works. Yep, I should have actually mentioned that. Double knock's a really good option because we know that spray seed and paracord on ryegrass that's this big is, is asking a lot. Yep, so perfect well. Yep, yep, either way. So I'll just say just a comment. Um, we're uh, eating the big stuff and uh, spray seed from rock zone, double knock with spray seed and rock zone or something like that, rather than the round up, just because uh, you're reaping the waterlog anyway. Um, so I think it's, it's going to be the efficiency of round up for growing far. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Just give it out of the ground. It's not worth it. Using it. So that's all we've been. Um, particularly if you're going tidy up before you want to sow it, um, it's a little bit less. All to do with that actively growing, isn't it? If it is actively growing, you'll be right. But yep, if it's yeah. still struggling, yep, couldn't agree more. With a fodder crop option, uh, Tony, could you take a punt on Sorphoni, Ureas, or in Leach Dale? Nah, I, how it moves through the soil, I don't know. What, what you can potentially take a punt on with yourself on your ears is a fair bit of the breakdown also happens through acidic hydrolysis. So if your soil pH is 4.5 to low 5s, a fair bit of that, so there's been very little microbials, but that acid hydrolysis will have broken a fair component of that, that SU down. Now, that, remember, your imis aren't broken down by acidic hydrolysis. So, yep, the SUs, there is a reasonable chance. Um, and, you know, I hadn't actually really mentioned um, safflower in that presentation, but that's potentially another one maybe with trace amounts of SU left there. Yeah, I'd expect that you'll get a really good strike, so you'll actually be able to see the rows. And then 10 weeks later, why isn't this stuff growing? So what do you suggest, just a few replies across the one year? Or? Yeah, well, as I said, I've, so that was 17, that was applied. Bolac, we've had a metre of rain on it, two 500 mil years basically, and we're still seeing an effect this year. Thank you, thank you, yes. Yep. So, I mean, probably, yeah, <coughs> clover would be a better option than, than ryegrass and in particular phalaris, but um, proceed with caution. <coughs>